Hi guys, welcome back to another video and today I'll be taking a look at some of the best mods you can get for your Logitech racing wheel. It's compatible with the Logitech G29, G920 and the G923. And the good thing about this is that it won't void your warranty. So these mods are from a company called MVH Studios and they've designed, created and 3D printed the components. I'll include details for all of the items I'll be showing today in the description below. So I've got a number of different products consisting of two wheels. One is an F1 wheel and the other is a GT wheel. These are from their Series 1 collection. I've also got a magnetic paddle shifter, a telemetry display and a brake pedal upgrade providing a variable pitch spring. So in today's video I'll be showing you what's involved in installing these mods, testing them out so you get an idea of what it's like to use and hopefully it will help you decide if it's worth getting. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to get notified of my next release. So let's take a brief look at each of the items before I install them. Starting with the wheels. So they're 3D printed with strong plastic made from genuine 3K twill carbon fiber with a gloss finish. The rim diameter is 29 centimeters and the back of the wheel has an additional brace. That adds to its stiffness and sturdiness of the wheel ensuring there's no flex and it has a good solid build to it. It's marginally lighter than the original, weighing in at just 53 grams. The grips are 3D printed and covered with smooth leather. There's a number of customization options available. So you get a choice of 12 different styles for the F1 wheel and 19 for the GT wheel. For the grips, you have a choice of suede leather, PLA, smooth leather or vegan leather. Then we have the magnetic paddle shifter, which is also 3D printed and has a strong build to it and magnets on either side. The telemetry display has a touchscreen display, which is encased in a 3D printed box. It comes with a coiled cable. One end is USB-A and the other end is a Type-C connector. There's a couple of mount options available for this, allowing you to either mount it directly on a wheel or on the wheel base. And finally, we have the variable pitch spring. Not much to say about this. It's just a strong metal spring. If you have a Logitech G29 or G920, then it's worth doing this upgrade. But if you owned a G923, then no upgrade is required as it already comes with this spring installed. The installation process is identical on all the Logitech wheels and I'll be installing this on my Logitech G29. Let's begin by taking a Phillips screwdriver and removing the screws behind the wheel. There's eight screws in total and two of them are holding onto the L3 and R3 buttons. Then remove the six screws from the front around the PlayStation logo, gently remove the wheel from the wheel base and carefully remove the connector. Lay the wheel facing down and remove the seven screws from the circuit board and then the two black screws on the side to remove the R2 and L2 buttons. Lift off the circuit board and unscrew the two screws behind it. Place the circuit board back and lift off. Rescrew the circuit board back onto the base. Next, check that the buttons feel okay and the dial moves around easily. Once you confirm that, then connect the cable to the wheel base and gently press it back into position. And if you're doing this on the G29, just be careful aligning the PS3, PS4 switch at the top. And once secured, screw on the screws behind the paddle shifts and your wheel should look like this. Now we can move on to adding the magnetic paddle shifter, which is pretty simple to do. Remove the screws from both ends, pull apart and then place the two ends behind the paddle shifts. Resecure the screws. Remember the arrows pointing towards each other should have no gaps, but on the other side, there should be a five millimeter gap. Check the paddle shifts and that's it, you're done. Now I'm going to add the F1 wheel to the base. Gently place the wheel onto the base from the bottom upwards and push back until secured. Then just add the screws around the front to firmly attach it. Next, let's attach the load spring for the pedals. And just to note, this only needs to be done on the Logitech G29, G920, and it can also be done on the G27 and G25 brake pedal. And just to note, it doesn't have to be done on the G923 brake pedal as it's already installed with this spring. Installation is pretty easy. First, remove the screws from the back of the pedal board and remove the screws from the pedal plates. Move the pedal plates to the side, then you can lift off the board and detach the cable, allowing you enough space to work on the brake. Now remove the two screws from the side of the brake pedal, lift away the pedal, then you can remove the linear spring. Now just to show the two springs side by side, you can see the difference in them. Now you just replace it with the variable pitch spring, reattach all the screws, place the pedal board back on, and we can just attach the pedal plates and you're done. Moving on to the telemetry display, there's a couple of mount options available, allowing you to either mount it on the wheel or the wheel base. I have the latter option, 
And for this, you unscrew the screws at the bottom of the mount, then place it on the T-bar, put the nut in position and tighten. Next, unscrew the bolt from the stand and attach it to the back of the display, and then screw in the bolt to secure the display. The T-shaped mount can then be hooked onto the wheelbase at the back and at the sides to keep it securely in place. And it's as simple as that to get all the mods installed. Now I've mounted the G29 and the pedals onto my SIM cockpit from Track Racer. This is the TR8. The overall fit of the rim on the wheelbase is excellent together with the buttons on there. The carbon fiber finish looks really good with no flex at all. You've got the Red Bull Vinyl A mod with the Red Bull logo stuck on the top and flipping between the different wheels is easy. Just remove the screws from the front and gently remove the wheel and reattach a new wheel. Testing out the wheel, obviously it's not going to change the feel of the force feedback as it's still using the same gears and cogs, so performance from the wheelbase is exactly the same. However, with one big difference, the F1 wheel is lighter than the original G29 wheel. It's comfortable and the lever grips are shaped really well and have the right thickness and with easy reach to the controls on the wheel. The paddle shifter does feel good. I do like the tactile sound from the magnetic paddle shifter, giving it a mechanical feel when shifting up and down, which feels really good and together with feeling a little bit more responsive when shifting up and down. The brake pedal does have the same feel as the Logitech G923 brake pedal. But if you don't have the G923, then getting the variable spring is definitely worth it. This is because the linear spring that the G29 has in its brake pedal is a lot stiffer. So the first 50% feels easy, but once you get past this, it does get a lot stiffer and you need a lot more force. But with the variable spring and its varying distances between the coils, the resistance of the spring increases with the spring deflection, making it more responsive and accurate. The telemetry display is compatible with the PS4, PS5, Xbox and PC. However, on the consoles, you need to check the MVH Studios website to see which games are compatible with the PlayStation and Xbox. For PC gaming, you need to install their SIM Hub plugin to get it to work. The telemetry display shows a rev counter at the top and a number of different details on the screen depending on the game you're playing. Plus, as it's touchscreen, it saves on flicking through the MFD settings of the game. So a pretty cool mod to have, but I'd say more useful on a PC because the number of games it's compatible with on a console is quite limited, I'd say. So in summary, I'm really impressed with these mods for a Logitech racing wheel. Simple to install and set up. And the key thing here is that it doesn't void your warranty. Price wise, I think it's pretty reasonable too. And if you're confused on which wheel to get for your Logitech wheel, then the best recommendation is in your seating position. So if you sit low and prefer the wheel near your chest, then the F1 wheel will feel better. But if you race with the wheel more at arm's length or lower towards your hip, then the GT wheel would be best suited. So there you have it. You made it to the end of another video and I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. And for those of you who got to the end of this video, please leave a comment with the words Logitech Mod, as it's nice to see who got to the end of my videos. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. You can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you're new to the channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to be notified of my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.